श्रीमाते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी जी नाम जे नमस्ते सरस्वते देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवारी पश्चाते सितारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासरी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so thank you all for coming here this evening and uh i'm going to have to i apologize it happens to me every time i come to america i have to go through a adjustment speaking to english speaking audiences and uh i've been away for 2 years from america it's the first last night was the first time i spoke to an english speaking audience in 2 years so <clears throat> takes me a little time to internally adjust the circuitry <laughs> to, i don't speak i'm not fluent in other languages don't get me wrong i wish misunderstand i'm used to speaking in in fragments because i have a i have a translator <laughs> so uh, i usually speak a, a sentence and then he translates and then i think in between but now i don't have any time to think in between <laughs> not, and my whole life is like that because even when i'm having conversations it's usually through a translator oh you could tell well, you can just repeat what i say and then it gives me time to think <laughs> Although I do speak some Russian, but basic very conversational Russian, but I can't give lectures in it. <coughs> so uh I have this uh difficulty whenever I turn to America adjusting it takes me a few days. <coughs> so bear with me. Happy to be here. Uh it has been 2 years since I've been in the United States and uh seeing a lot of familiar faces that I remember seeing 2 years ago or maybe even a little more than 2 years ago <coughs> I just returned um the last last place I was before coming here was in Belarus and uh a city called Minsk and uh we had about about somewhere between 5 and 700 people at our sunday lecture and we took advantage of having one everyone present um at this particular time of the year uh to speak about shimad bhagavatam and to speak some verses from the shimad bhagavatam but not only to speak about the shimad bhagavatam but to uh speak about the importance of its distribution because in most places in the world at this particular time on this particular day even uh for the whole month uh many devotees who are living in our temples and especially congregational members have uh, organized themselves for a mass distribution of Srila Prabhupada's books and uh uh so uh, in fact when i arrived at the minsk temple there was a as soon as you walked in the whole wall was postered with posters and and uh in notifying all the members of the congregation and community and mind you were uh, were illegal in in Belarus <laughs> so uh, uh nonetheless still uh many hundreds of devotees and congregational members are taxing their brains uh and trying to find different outlets to spread the me- spread the message of Shrimad Bhagavatam which was certainly the desire of our previous acharyas and was certainly shilaprabha's desire as all as all of us 
who personally experienced during Prabhupada's manifest presence in this world, how much he emphasized the importance of transcendental uh, literatures, scriptures being distributed for the enlightenment and welfare of human society. And in fact, uh, we think of Srila Prabhupada in many different ways, but he was also very, very revolutionary in spirit. What was that? <laughs> huh? It was a telephone. <laughs> it could have fooled me. It has indigestion. <laughs> Sounds like me after a feast. <laughs> <laughs> um, with one very well known verse. Huh? Switching off. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're putting it to sleep. <laughs> Euthanasia? <laughs> Um, what was that first? Tavakatamritam tapta jivanam kavabi iditam kama sapaham shravana mangalam shimad atatam buvi grihejana buvi? What is it? Ye buridajana. Ye buridajana. Yes, Prabhupada would quote this verse. The nectar of your words and the descriptions of your activities are, are the life and soul of those who are suffering in this material world. These narrations transmitted by learned sages eradicate all one's sinful action, reactions and bestow good fortune upon anyone who hears them. These narrations are broadcast all over the world and they are filled with spiritual power. Certainly those who distribute the message of Godhead are the most munificent. <clears throat> Prabhupada would, in fact, this verse is quoted in many places in Srimad Bhagavatam Chaitanya Charitamrita, and Prabhupada would quote it in lectures. Words spoken of the gop by the gopis, actually, to Krishna, uh, describing that those who distribute the message of Godhead are the most munificent. They're the greatest welfare workers. Is there a some battery going low, or is this is fuzzy, or is it? It's okay. Okay. It's getting a little raspy. It sounds yeah. It sounds like the battery is going dead. <clears throat> and uh, Prabhupada would uh, request many times devotees to tax tax their brains and find different novel ways how to. Uh, spread the message of Srimad Bhagavatam and change people's lives. Actually, that's what a revolution is meant to do. There are different types of revolutions. I personally can remember one revolution that I happened to be in the middle of, which was a little bit different revolution. It was in Moscow in 1991. And... Uh, when there was an attempted revolution and uh, they were looking for change but they were trying to change something different than the hearts of the people greatest change, greatest revolution is when we can actually change the heart and realize that uh, real liberation from political, social uh, oppression real liberation from uh, repeated birth and death can only be achieved by a revolution of consciousness and uh, in fact even one of the verses of the Bhagavatam I think it's in this chapter that I was going to read from uh, yes describes on the other hand that literature which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, forms, pastimes and so on of the unlimited supreme lord 
is a different creation full of transcendental words directed toward bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. Such transcendental literatures, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. honest. This is Shilavyasadev, also speaking about a revolution. A revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. I remember, and those, I guess the only one present at that time, in the 70s, is, was Chandramali Maharaj, one who was <laughs> reading Prabhupada's books. Uh, OPR, but he's not here, is he? He's in the altar. Oh, he's, in, he's on the altar. <coughs> you are? Okay. Forgive me. <laughs> We're talking about revolutions. <laughs> And uh, we actually thought, you know, that we could take over the world in the 1970s through Prabhupada's distribution of books. And Prabhupada uh, created that, that spirit in us, you know, to, that these books will change the world. He made so many comments that the day will be known sometime in the future that this Krishna consciousness movement is the movement that saved the world. He made many statements, uh, uh, not simply suggesting, but almost predicting uh, what would happen as a result of uh, changing people's consciousness. I'm speaking about this for a particular reason, because uh, I happen to be, uh, I was reading in my uh, computer, I know, located a file of letters. Uh, I'm going to read a few of them tonight. But they were letters that were written by people who uh, got Srila Prabhupada's books somehow. And uh, they explained, they wrote into their, to our BBT. This I happen to be the BBT in Moscow. All these letters that I have were in, in, uh, in Russia. They wrote in letters to the BBT and uh, Describing the impact that Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, had in their lives upon first reading it. And uh, I wanted to read some of those because that also can be a source so we can draw inspiration from them. Uh, again, to place emphasis on the message I wanted to speak about tonight, it was trying to encourage all of you to somehow catch the spirit which is taking place in practically every other country in the world and uh, should take place here in America where it all started. <laughs> it's, where, it's where the seed, seed was planted and where the revolution began. It was just 220 miles south of here. <laughs> transplant, yeah. It was a transplant. <coughs> But it started here. It started here. Of course, sometimes people challenge me, say, yeah, well, why aren't you here? <laughs> They're saying, you're over there. Why aren't you over here? <laughs> we are supposed to be. But uh, anyway, circumstances are such that I'm not always here. Uh, but the spirit is as alive, uh, at least in the places where I'm traveling. In fact, even right now, I just... I was in Budapest just transiting uh, in Budapest before coming here and uh, hundreds of devotees are out on the streets and the congregational members are also coming. Uh, they have planned uh, the Gita Jayanti, I think they just had last night, uh, Gita Jayanti, because yeah. I think the actual Gita Jayanti is December 16th, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But they, they had a Gita Jayanti at the temple last night, and something like 2,000 Bhagavad Gitas were distributed. <laughs> and uh, so many ways that if we're actually, if we, you know, many times devotees ask the question, what can I do to serve? <laughs> it's a common question. 
It's natural. Everybody wants to do something. They want to serve. But what is it that uh, really, if we really want to serve, we should be thinking about who do we want to please, and what is it that really should please Srila Prabhupada? And uh, there's no doubt in the mind of any sincere follower of Srila Prabhupada who served Prabhupada during his manifest presence, what pleased him. And he, uh, he literally drove us you know, to mad, <laughs> to uh, voluntarily accept austerities and conveniences, and, uh, and that there was a certain nectar, a certain taste that comes from making that sacrifice and which is undoubtedly not for our own pleasure, not for our own glorification, profit, or anything else, other than simply to do something which is very pleasing to the heart of a Vaishnava who feels compassion for suffering humanity, <coughs> is that uh, he wants the message of Godhead to be heard by as many living entities as possible so their, their lives can change, their course in life can change. Their life might not immediately change, Prabhupada was thinking about planting seeds. He was a transcendental gardener, and even description is given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. How Lord Chaitanya is described as a transcendental gardener. Uh, he was planting the seeds, and, and the trees were growing, and the trees were bearing fruit. And the fruit from these trees were of love of Godhead. And he said, how many fruits can I distribute alone? I'm requesting every human being Please help me to distribute these fruits of love of Godhead. This is a message of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, and Prabhupada, uh, in the same way, was like the transcendental gardener thinking how to plant seeds. And if they were <coughs> properly cultivated, and taken care of, and properly nourished, he establishes temples as places where people can come once the seed was planted, where they can actually have those seeds nourished by Krishna Kutta. Uh, and uh, their course in life can change. Whereas, as we know from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Matirna Krishna Parataksvatobha, Topi Vajeta Griha Vartana, Madanta Gobiya Vishitam Tamishnam, Punak Punascha Vatacharvananam. This was course of many of our lives, including myself, for sure. Sri Bhagavatam Prahlad Maharaj describes that persons who are addicted to sinful activities, they repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. Uh, they go down, what are they, Matir Nikrishne, what is that verse? They glide down to a hellish condition of life. They make progress, actually they make progress towards the hellish conditions of life and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. The inclinations towards Krishna are never aroused either by their own endeavors, by the efforts of others, or by a combination of both. That's one form of so-called progress, <laughs> making progress towards hellish conditions of life. <clears throat> but yet, even a moment's association with a devotee, and Prabhupada used to ex emphasize that, you know, even if they touch these books, even if they just uh, read one line of these books, you see the pictures in the books, their lives can change. I have a story, I, I, I've told this story before, but it's, it, it's an example. I don't want to digress, but it's, it's relevant. I was traveling with our beloved Sridhar Maharaj, and uh, it was, I can't remember what year it was, maybe the late 1980s. We were traveling, uh, to different places in uh, the Northeast and, and out in Chicago and the Michigan area. And we were visiting temples and doing programs. And uh, one day we would share lectures. He would speak first. He would, or not, he, we'd have sometimes, usually two lectures a day. He would give one and I would give another one, the other one. We stopped and we did a, a lecture in... Uh, Somewhere in Michigan, I can't remember. And uh, 
Then we had to drive to, a, uh, after that lecture, we had to drive to another city in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I did a, a program at one devotee's home. And Grand Rapids is a kind of a remote place, not really visited by so many Vaishnavas, <laughs> at least at that time. And this devotee had put posters up in the city and was inviting people to his home to come hear a lecture. So I came and I was supposed to give that lecture. I came in and I sat down and uh, uh, gave a talk. I didn't have time to speak to anybody. I didn't know who was present, nothing, because we were late from the previous lecture. And after the lecture, I asked her any questions. <coughs> and one boy who was sitting and listening attentively to the whole lecture, he raised his hands. He said, yes, I have a question. Can I please ask it? I said, yes, please, go ahead. And he said, can you tell me if I'm pronouncing this correctly? And I said, uh, I, what are you referring to? He said, just listen and then tell me if it's correct. And then he said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I said, sounds correct to me, why do you ask? And he said, you know, I've been living in this city I can't remember how many years, I think something like 20 years. <clears throat> and he said, 10 years ago, I found this, this, this here magazine. It was a Back to Godhead magazine. He said, it was sitting on the seat of a bus. And he said, uh, I read the magazine and I really wanted to learn more. And it, there was a little, I guess, an advertisement in the magazine for beads. So he sent away for beads. And... Uh, and the beads had a little instruction booklet, how to chant on the beads, and how many <coughs> times to chant on the beads. And <laughs> so he said, his booklet said I should chant on each bead, 108 beads, you know, and do that 16 times. He said, now I got these beads and I've been chanting them uh, 16 times around for 10 years, but I never heard anybody chant it before. <laughs> 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 and I said, I didn't know if I was pronouncing it correctly or not. And it wasn't until I saw a poster today about, you know, you people giving a lecture. I made the connection. I thought I'd come here and ask the question. <laughs> Shudha Maharaj looked at me and <laughs> shocked. <laughs> He's been chanting 16 rounds a day for 10 years. Never met a devotee. <laughs> We got it back to Godhead magazine on the seat of a bus. Prabhupada said his books are like torpedoes. You never know where they're going to land. You know, it's like... <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, that's one example. I mean, I can think of so many. I'm sure everybody can think of at least those of us who have uh, been in the field. And uh, we can glean a lot of different stories of people's life's experience. Uh, as how it's dramatically changed as a result of coming in contact with Srila Prabhupada's books. I mean, my own personal life is also testimony. I, I, uh, I was interested in yoga, and uh, I wandered into a Brentano's in, in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 1972, uh, and uh, I saw a, a book opened it up, it was a picture of a yogi sitting in meditation and uh, he going through different points of the body and I thought it looked like an interesting book and uh, so I purchased it and uh, found out that it was a different type of book uh, than I was looking for but it was, that's how I got Bhagavad Gita in the bookstore and as I found out about maybe 15 years later <coughs> Now, this is, this is an amazing story. When you think about it, I found out 15 years later there was a devotee in, who lived in the Washington, D.C. temple who walked into that Brentano's and just dropped Prabhupada's Gita on the bookshelf. Brentano's didn't even, it wasn't even part of their inventory. <laughs> he just decided he'd drop it there and see if somebody would buy it. <clears throat> and he did that in many different bookstores. And, of course, Brentano's charged me for the book because the price was on the back. It wasn't part of their inventory, but they still charged me the price on the back of the book. <coughs> but, uh, and I just picked up the book and I bought it. And, uh, uh, 
that's what I can, I can say, yes, we changed the course, course of my life. And everybody has, it has their personal testimony, I'm sure, of how um, coming in contact with Srila Prabhupada's books, and as I wanted to read tonight, some examples, some letters of how people's lives have been dramatically changed uh, for the better. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> that's how Prabhupada was thinking uh, when he published his books and when he, uh, and he requested his followers to assist him in distributing them. He was thinking how to plant seeds and change people's course in life so that uh, they would have some hope to become, as we just wrote, we quoted the verse, eradicate sinful reactions. Uh, these messages, uh, trans these narrations transmitted by learned sages, uh, they eradicate sinful reactions and they bestow good fortune upon anyone who hears them. This is the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. I wanted to read a few verses about Srimad Bhagavatam. It's from the twelfth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is a summary of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, I'm just going to read these few verses and then... The last chapter? Yes, no, this is chapter 12, canto 12, chapter 12. The last chapter, I think, is chapter 13. Um, I'm not going to read the Sanskrit, I'll just read the translation. Thus, O best of the Brahmins, I have explained herein what you have inquired from me. This literature has glorified in full detail the activities of the Lord's pastime incarnations. If when falling, slipping, feeling pain, or sneezing, one involuntarily cries out in a loud voice, Obeisances to Lord Hari, or Hareye Namaha. One will be automatically freed from all his sinful reactions. Hmm. Purport. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur explains that Lord Sri Chaitanya is always loudly chanting the song Hareye Nama Krishna in the courtyard of Shiva's Thakur, and that this same Lord Chaitanya will free us from our materialistic enjoying propensity if we also loudly chant the glories of the Supreme Lord Hari. <clears throat> when people properly glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead or simply hear about His power, the Lord personally enters their hearts and cleanses away every trace of misfortune. Hmm. I guess this is consistent with the verse I quoted. First we said how eradicate sinful reactions, and then it uh, bestows good fortune upon whoever hears them. So, when the people properly glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead or simply hear about His power, the Lord personally enters their heart and cleanses away every trace of misfortune, just as the sun removes the darkness or as a powerful wind drives away the clouds. We oftentimes think of that verse, Krishna Surya Sam Maya Hayandakara. Right? Krishna is like the sunshine, Maya is like darkness. Wherever there is sunshine, there cannot be darkness. Similarly, anyone who takes the Krishna consciousness, then immediately the darkness of illusion or the influence of the material energy will vanish. Wherever there is sunshine, there cannot be darkness. So here the example is given just as the sun removes darkness, in the same way, presence of the message of the Srimad Bhagavatam, when it enters into the heart, it cleanses away every trace of misfortune. So there are two examples, analogies given here. The first analogy is the sun removes the darkness. Well, someone may say, well, what if there's clouds in the sky? The sun won't remove the darkness. So if somebody says, if there's clouds in the sky, then the other example is just as a powerful wind drives away the clouds. Well, either way, one or the other. <laughs> so if the sun well, it cannot manifest because of the presence of the clouds, then it's also the message of Srimad Bhagavatam is like a powerful wind which drives away the clouds so that the sun can come through. So, huh? Yes. 
like the wind. Words that do not describe the transcendental personality of Godhead but instead deal with temporary matters are simply false and useless. Only those words that manifest the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord are actually truthful, auspicious, and pious. Hmm. Anyways, this verse simply again emphasizes the necessity of hearing those words which are connected with the Supreme Lord. Uh, that is factual truth and auspicious and real piety. Whereas those words that do not describe uh, uh, the transcendental glories of the Lord, they're described such literatures that appear to be like place of pilgrimage for crows. Uh, whereas the, uh, wherever there is discussion of the pastimes of the Supreme Lord are like the places where the swans congregate. Uh, and uh, so in the purport it says sooner or later all material literature and discussion must fail the test of time on the other hand the transcendental descriptions of the Supreme Lord can free us from the bondage of illusion and restore us to our eternal status as loving servants of the Lord those words describing the glories of the all famous personality of Godhead are attractive, relishable, and ever fresh. And see, indeed, such words are a perpetual festival for the mind, and they dry up the ocean of misery. Well, they may not necessarily, we may just describe here as a perpetual festival for the mind, but we also know that uh, the example is given that for a person who has a jaundice, he cannot taste anything sweet. Uh, so we may think there are. There are other topics or discussions which are festivals for the mind uh, because we cannot yet relish the sweetness of the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. But nonetheless, just the example is given for a person who's afflicted with jaundice if he cannot taste anything sweet, but if he is very careful and he very attentively uh, takes the proper medicine which is sugar, then its natural sweetness will destroy the disease at the root and its natural taste will, will be relished again. Same thing with the message of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's considered to be the proper medicine. What is it? Enechi o shaudhi maya nasi bharo lagi harinama maha mantra lao tumi magi Bhaktivinoda describes it as I have come to give the medicine for the disease. And there's another verse. Nivrititasha upagiyaman babasoch chocham and obiramat. Yes. The tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. There's another verse which describes the message of Srimad Bhagavatam to be simply like medicine. Ashoda. Ashoda is medicine, yes. Destroys Baba Rog. Baba Rog. For those undergoing repeated birth and death in this world. So, I'm just reading these few verses of the Bhagavata, about the Bhagavatam, from the Bhagavatam. Uh, so we can gain a little appreciation about what the message of Srimad Bhagavatam can factually do. I wanted to read, as I said, a few letters. There are many stories I could tell, but I want also Chandramali Maharaj to have an opportunity to speak on this important topic. Uh, and uh, these are letters. I, I have hundreds of them in my computer. And I happen to be looking, as I said, looking through my computer and uh, found a f some of them. This was a letter written from somebody who got Śrīla Prabhupāda's Bhagavad Gita. I'm addressing to you with hope that you will consider my request. I already have some of your books, but the matter is that every time I lend a book to somebody, I finally have to give it to that person as a gift. Yes, to give away as a sincere gift, because after reading it, the person became thoughtful about life. Thus, by chance, I became a distributor of your literature. 
but at present I feel a great informational shortage. So I want to order two copies of Bhagavad Gita and Perfect Questions. I hope to gradually buy all the books, but presently cannot do it due to the decreasing of the rubles rate. <laughs> money is, money as it is, 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 money as they are, or as it is, are not as big of importance in my life. This is all temporary and will go. But your books are eternal. I will hope for your support. Please inform me about the new books that you have produced. Another letter. My friends and I are very interested in your literature. We have some of your books, but not all. Your books are passing from hands to hands, and whoever gets them reads them with great interest. And the most wonderful thing is that after reading them, the people become much more pure in their thoughts and deeds. Personally, I for the first time see such literature. We're very eager to keep in touch with you in the future. This is from a little girl, eight years old. <clears throat> Hello, I want you to send me six books about that woman. <laughs> she saw a picture of Krishna and saw us so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I want to send me six books about that woman. If they are in Russian, then please send them. If not, maybe you have a dictionary for the books? <laughs> Goodbye, I'm looking forward for the books. I wish you all good luck in passing out these books to the good people. If you have some new books about that woman, please let me know. <laughs> I like her image and her beauty is unsurpassed in society. Please give my sincere regards to all, for I know how difficult it is to send out these books. <laughs> Eight years old, yeah. This is, well, there's another one here from an 11-year-old girl somewhere, I think. Where is it? Yes. Hello, my name is Olga. I'm 11. I received your postcard. I cannot send you the money. My whole possession is 100 rubles. Please send me the cheapest book. My mother didn't allow me to order your books, but I write this letter secretly. I send you all the money I have. Please send me at least one book. I would beg from you on my knees, but I cannot see you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't write anymore because my mother is coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I highlighted a few here. Um, wait a minute. There's, there's so many I can't. Uh, Hello, this is my second letter to you, and the first one I ordered Bhagavad Gita as it is. Avoiding much writing, I write what is most important. As long as I remember myself, my life in this world is misery. And as my life goes on, the miseries grow deeper and deeper, day after day. At present, the situation is such that nothing in this life gives me pleasure anymore. After reading the Bhagavad Gita as it is, I realized that the time has come for me to take up devotional service to the Lord. I asked the International Society for Krishna Consciousness to help me and give me advice what I should do to start. That's another book. Uh, well, my name is, he gives his name, his name is Vasily Petrovich. <laughs> Uh, please accept my sincere gratitude for the books I've received, for the knowledge, which is unique. This knowledge about the Supreme Personality of God had totally changed and transformed my life, which seemed to me so dull and unattractive. Now my life has changed due to the Supreme Light, which pervaded all my thoughts and deeds emanating from His lips. Could you please inform me about the newly produced books of your society with gratitude and respect? Vasily Petrovich. Uh, dear publishers of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, thank you that you took up the responsible task of enlightening people through the Vedic philosophy, which became available by the grace of the great Sri Srimad A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. I would like so much to somehow help you in enlightening people with the Eastern wisdom. I engaged in perfecting my spiritual knowledge for already several years. Thus, after hearing about the opportunity to get the secret scriptures, I could not wait. And here I am writing the, 
the order for the books. Our town is poor with this kind of literature, but is rich with pure-hearted people. I know how difficult it is to fulfill the order, but I think I won't be able to express my gratitude when I finally get these books into my hands. If it's possible, please send me the science of self-realization, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Life Comes from Life. I can read so many more. I think you're getting the hint or the sense of, you know, the point that I I wanted to try to convey is that we should never think that uh, it's... uh, uh, We should never minimize the importance of giving someone Srila Prabhupada's book. That's essentially... Prabhupada knew what these books were capable of doing and uh, he inculcated that in the hearts of his followers certainly to the degree that we we read them and our lives also continue to transform by hearing Prabhupada's message and the message of previous acharyas that Prabhupada contained within his commentaries and Krishna's message words spoken by him and about him uh, to the degree that we also experience that change in our hearts then we can also appreciate that if efficacy and the potency. Uh, Prabhupada had a way of uh, making Krishna consciousness accessible to everyone. There's a verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita which glorifies Lord Chaitanya. I offer my respectful obeisance to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is an ocean of transcendental mercy and although the subject matter of bhakti is very difficult to understand, nonetheless he made it very easily accessible for the people in the age of Kali. <clears throat> and uh, when I read that verse of how Lord Chaitanya made bhakti so accessible, I think also common is a verse in the Bhagavatam spoken about Yudhisthira Maharaj. And uh, in that verse, um, uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj is glorified because he's being recognized that uh, he has bhakti. He said, I can see that Krishna is not only your guru, your god, the head of your family, but I can also see that Krishna has become your messenger, and therefore I can understand that Krishna has given you bhakti. The Lord does not give bhakti so easily because when he gives bhakti, he has to give himself. So even though he may give liberation very easily, bhakti is not so easily achieved. This is a verse in the Bhagavatam. And Yudhisthira Maharaj is being appreciated because the Supreme Lord, Krishna, as we know, he became Yudhisthira Maharaj's messenger. He brought a message to Duryodhana in an attempt to seek a resolution to the battle of Kurukshetra. Uh-huh. So he became a messenger for Yudhisthira. Imagine, you know, we may think, you know, what is a messenger? We think of a message. Call somebody as a messenger, you give them some message. Here, take this to the... Krishna became Yudhisthira Maharaj's message, messenger since he became Arjuna's chariot driver. So the Lord becomes submissive, uh, subordinate to the desires of his devotee. Therefore he doesn't give bhakti so easily because if he does he has to give himself. So although bhakti is not so easily obtainable, nonetheless we see that Lord Chaitanya broke open the storehouse and he made it so easily accessible. And, uh, and uh, we see that Srila Prabhupada in his books, in his commentaries, is what he took the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, he took the commentaries of the previous acharyas, and he made them so easily accessible so that anybody could understand the nature of bhakti by coming in contact with his books. In fact, I think I've told this story before, maybe even here, many years ago. There was uh, an ashram, which I think is still there. The ashram in, uh, what is it? Kripalu Ashram, right? In Western Massachusetts. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, there was, he's not there anymore. His name was Yogi Amrit Desai. And uh, Yogi Amrit Desai had a, uh, he had met Srila Prabhupada in the 1970s. 
I had a conversation with Prabhupada, I think it was in Bombay. And if you look in the, uh, in the folio, in the De Veda base, in the Prabhupada's conversations, you'll see that Yogi Amr Desai, in his conversation with Srila Prabhupada, he was explaining to Prabhupada that how can you, uh, how, it's, he said it was very difficult, how can you get people to strictly follow the message of Krishna consciousness? He said, this is something very, very difficult. How will you change people and get them to strictly follow, give up meat, sex, intoxication, and give up these things? He said, this, he said I, I, I can appreciate what you have done, but he said that I cannot do it. <coughs> And, uh, and in one sense, oh, no, he wasn't saying I was appreciating what you have done. He was sort of like challenging, how can you do it, actually? How is it yeah, how is it possible? <laughs> he was challenging. Somebody else would never even try it. Yeah, they were, nobody else would try it, but Prabhupada was, you know, so bold. So I, I was invited, my godbrother, his name was Bhagwat Das, he, had a, he knew Yogi Amrit Desai, and, and uh, Yogi Amrit Desai told Told, uh, told his followers to contact the devotees at the Hare Krishna temple and invite them to come and let them have kirtan. He said, but no lecture. <laughs> and he said, they can just come and they can come and have kirtan. <clears throat> so about, I think about maybe seven or eight of us, we went to the ashram and they were having their artik ceremony and they invited us to have kirtan. And uh, they were very reserved in the beginning, but gradually everybody, there was about 300 of his followers there. Were you there, Yamuna? You were there? I mean, uh, visiting when, when... Huh? When you went there, I was... When I went to that, yeah. to that program? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were there? Yeah. <laughs> so you remember what happened. <laughs> So we had a kirtan, everybody was dancing. And then, uh, and then Yogi Amrit Desai kind of came out and he sat on his asan and tried to be a little aloof. <laughs> but see, somehow we pulled him into the kirtan and he started dancing and chanting. Kirtan went on for another half hour and everybody was dancing. And then he kind of just spontaneously said, they said, okay, go ahead, talk. <laughs> so he let me speak, and I gave a lecture, and I remember that conversation that Prabhupada had with the Yogi Hamra Desai at the time. So I gave a lecture, and I spoke on that subject about how Prabhupada, you know, was able to give the message of Krishna consciousness and present it in such a way that people could follow because he was a perfect example. And I spoke about the necessity of being a good example and says if you strictly follow, then you can preach the message and it will affect others. In fact, it was sort of like the essence of my message. Uh -huh. wasn't challenging him, was it? No, I wasn't challenging him. He didn't feel challenged at all. He didn't feel challenged at all. In fact, after I finished speaking, then he, he spoke and he, he reflected on his conversation with Prabhupada. And uh, he said that I can see that, the, that I, if, he says that if I, I want my followers to get bhakti, they have to go to the followers of Bhakti Vinata Swami. <laughs> Yeah, he was very honest. He was very honest. And uh, anyways, I, I think about that as an example of how Prabhupada made it accessible. Although very difficult, very difficult to gain access to, nonetheless through his books and through his example, and through his followers and through his mission. Although bhakti is very difficult to understand, it can become very easily accessible by Srila uh, Prabhupada's kindness and mercy. So uh, please, I uh, encourage all of you to please take advantage of the spirit which is spreading uh, everywhere throughout the world, the spirit of giving uh, in this season of the time of the year. So if you can take up the spirit and somehow 
tax your brains and how you can take some of Srila Prabhupada's books, give them to your colleagues at work, give them to somebody you may meet on the street, uh, give them to your friends, give them to your family, uh, distribute them, and come back for more. Even one book can change somebody's life. As we example we gave, I could tell many, many stories about people's lives who has changed by getting a book, but I want to give Chandramali Maharaj to continue to speak about this subject and to share his realizations also because he also uh, understands the spirit that Srila Prabhupada inculcated to his manifest presence. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Right. Can you move the microphone, Yamuna? Thank you very much, Maharaj. He fully dressed the deity. I don't know what I can add to the deity's outfit now. From the beginning to the end, he completely, Maharaj completely described the subject from you know, the principles to the philosophy to the practice to the examples and to the inspiration that is going around this time of year amongst the society. So I'll try, because he's asked me to speak, I'll say something. Of course, we all will have our own experiences, but I just, I, the only thing I can really think that is maybe essential to help us maybe push that point a little bit more is the spirit of gratitude that comes by way of our own experiences. <coughs> and the sense that many of us probably have somehow or other come to Krishna consciousness from receiving Srila Prabhupada's books or somehow or other coming in contact with the philosophy of Krishna consciousness in one way or the other. So we're grateful for that and we're, we're happy for that. And we might say the seed is planted and the seed is growing. It's actually growing now because of that. So in that same way, there's a certain... And Prabhupada was very much... Uh, Preaching on this point that there is a there, w with some res with some gain comes some responsibility. So we have a kind of a, like a responsibility to share our good fortune with others, and that's what makes the gift even more wonderful. <coughs> is that we want to give what we have, we also receive, and then that comes with a sense of appreciation. Knowledge. <laughs> Knowledge is the greatest of all, what we say, powers in the creation. Nothing can, can destroy truth. Truth cannot be destroyed even by time, which destroys everything, including whatever exists in this world. So this, these, this, these books are actually, what we say, vehicles of transcendental truth that are coming from those who have realized the truth not only the, the persons who are practicing it, but they actually are coming from the Lord Himself. Many of these verses from Srimad Bhagavatam were spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this knowledge is the greatest of all gifts. If you have knowledge, you're free. <laughs> Nothing can destroy you, not even death, actually. So, because this knowledge, and what is this knowledge teaching us? It's teaching us the fundamental principles of what we say happiness. That are we are not this body. And we are who we are. We are eternally connected in loving service to Krishna. So to, to understand that knowledge and to distribute that knowledge, distribute it is actually a way to realize it even more. But by giving it, you actually get it. So we can appreciate the gift of Krishna consciousness or this transcendental knowledge even more by giving it to others. And there's so many, what we say, outlets to do it nowadays. Practically speaking, there's so many programs. There's always a new program of being developed year after year in order to somehow other make this, these books available. There is, now they're putting them into hotel rooms. 
just like, you know, you, I know you used to go traveling sometimes, you would stop and you'd always find a Gideon's Bible, like in every hotel, <laughs> wherever you would go. Now, along with the Gideon's Bible, there is the Bhagavad Gita in many hotels. So devotees are actually doing that. And people are actually picking up the book and saying, where can I get a copy of this? And so just by going to a hotel, they come in contact with Prabhupada. So here's one example of how distribution, using one's intelligence or one's creative intelligence to see how one can distribute these books. We also have vending machines. You can go with them, just like you get a bag of potato chips, you put some, you pull it, and now you can get a book like that. You can also go to like, these uh, travel places, travel resorts, and they have, just like you get brochures for different places, you can find a little small book. So, there are different ways. And we can't underestimate the power of this, this knowledge, because people are, are suffering. They're suffering, why? Because they're in ignorance. Ignorance is suffering, knowledge is freedom. We say that. What is that knowledge? The knowledge of truth, the knowledge that we are not this body and we are eternally connected with Krishna. We don't die, this body dies, we live eternally. But we suffer due to illusion, thinking in the wrong sense. So when we have this knowledge, then we can act on the knowledge and get the realization that this knowledge is providing. So in my own personal experiences, we just recently published a book about preaching in, in prisons. We've been doing this prison preaching for the last 21 or two years. Now it's starting to really develop. And the majority of the way this preaching is developing is sending books to inmates through the mail. And many of them never met a devotee. Sometimes they, their friend has a book or they, they get, a, I don't know, sometimes they see a little card there was one, one man, it's an interesting story. He, was, he walked into the prison library. He was looking for a book to read. So he saw uh, this book about, what was it? It was a Western. So he picked up the book and he was ready to read it. He opened up the cover and it was, all it was was the cover it was the Western, but inside was the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he was really, the way he explained it, I was really unhappy. But I decided to read it anyway, because <laughs> it was disappointing. And then he explained his story, how he came in contact with Bhagavad Gita, started to ask for more books, started to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and now is practicing devotional service. So, there are so many stories. I mean, as Maharaj said, there's, this is an ocean of how, just by placing these books in different places, as Prabhupada said, they're like torpedoes, they're like time bombs. That means that in due course of time, it will have an effect on someone's life. There was one story, I remember I was in the Chicago temple. One man came in. He was all happy about, about meeting devotees. And I asked him, well, how did you meet devotees? And he said, my father was cleaning out his old, old books, and he was bringing them to the used bookstore to get some exchange. And as he was carrying the boxes out, I noticed one book on the top. And I said, well, it is that book. And he, he gave it to me. It was the Bhagavad Gita. So I read it. I read half the book. And I thought, this is nice. This is interesting. This sounds like what I'm looking for. But there was no address in the book. So he was just praying to meet devotees. And one day he was walking along the street and some book distributor came up to him. So the seed was planted. And as the seed is planted, the watering process automatically follows. So there's hundreds and hundreds of stories. So as Maharaj was explaining, this is the season of Christmas. This is the season of giving. Of course, to give means to get. What is the greatest gift? Giving someone the opportunity to be free from all suffering. This material world is the place of suffering. The Bhagavad Gita, <coughs> Krishna says over and over again, asubam. So many verses, he explains the same point, this place is a place of suffering. Why? Because you can't stay here and you can't fulfill your desires. So he, these books are like transcendental, what we say, 
uh, lights that open up where is what we're looking for, where it can actually be found through the process of bhakti yoga. So this is the greatest, to give a person the opportunity for eternal life is the greatest of all gifts. We can give, we can give so many nice things, just like it's Christmas time and people are thinking, what can I buy for my relatives? What can I buy for my friends? I was on the plane the other day and I heard two stewardess talking to her. And one was saying, what are you going to buy for your relatives? She said, oh, they got so much, I'm just going to give them gift certificates, that's all. I'll just give them some money and let them buy what they want. They have high taste. I don't know what they would need. So this is the way, you know, our, what we say, so-called, you know, holiday season has gravitated down. It's more like an obligation to do something to some family member or to some friend. The spirit is lost. But actually the spirit is to give God or give something about God. That is actually the, that's the spirit of God. So, these books, uh, there's one, would you like to hear some stories? I'm not sure what I should speak about, the philosophy, or, but there is, not only does they, they transform life, they save lives. They actually save people's, when we say, life. There's one story, one boy, young man was distributing books in one shopping center and a man was sitting in the vehicle. It was a van, and uh, the, the devotee knocked on the window, and the man just waved him away. But what the man was doing is he was committing suicide. He had run his tailpipe back into the cab, and he was running the engine. And so he was there, and then the devotee was smart. So after he waved away, he took the book and put it on the man's windshield, a little paper back, and then he left. And then the man got curious, so he stopped his process of dying, and he rolled down the window, and he reached down, and he opened up, and he looked in the book, and it was one chapter or something said, how to become happy. Obviously, he wasn't happy, <laughs> just by his activities. And so he read it, and fortunately, in the very end of the book, there was a listing of temples. So he came, he stopped, and he just, he was inspired by what he read. Because Prabhupada's words talk to you. They're not just like philosophy, they're written. They actually speak to you. And Prabhupada's speaking to us through these words. As if you were listening to Srila Prabhupada on a tape, or you were there in his physical presence, these books, are, they have the same effect. And when Prabhupada was asked towards... Well, I guess the very last time, end of his stay with us on this earth, they, they asked him, they asked him, Prabhupada, how can we associate with you once you're gone? He said, read my books. He said, if you read my books, I'm in my books. Non-different. And I had an experience one time. I was reading <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam, just reading, reading, reading for a, for a long time. And then something most amazing happened. It happened once in my life, never happened again, that I wasn't reading anymore. The words were speaking. I heard Prabhupada's voice as I was reading the words. It was like automatic. It was like listening to a tape. And it was the word, as I was going through the, the words, the words were speaking to me, and it was Prabhupada's. And then it stopped. And then I realized Prabhupada was trying to help me understand, yes, I'm in my books, there's no difference. These books are, you know, my, when we say, contribution <coughs> to the world's misdirected society. This is my compassion. And Prabhupada used to spend, I mean, we would take rest, the devotees would take rest, 9 or 10 o'clock. And Prabhupada would take rest between 10 and 10, 10 and 11, and then he would get up after about an hour and a half. And then he would spend the greater part of the evening just translating the books into English and giving his Bhaktivedanta purports. He said, this is the only time I can do it without any distraction. So he would spend the good part of the evening just when we were all sleeping, Prabhupada was translating these books. And uh, he wanted that. He said, he, this, he said, this is my mission. That's why he gave us Krishna book in the very beginning. 
because he was thinking, I want to give the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but I'm an old man. I don't know how long I'm going to stay. So he decided to give us this, the tenth canto, Krishna's pastimes, in more like a story type form, interspersed with his philosophical explanations. Because he was thinking, if I may not make it through the tenth canto. And Prabhupada didn't. He actually left after 13 chapters of the tenth canto. Fortunately, he gave us Krishna book. And fortunately, the devotees con continued with the same spirit that Prabhupada had to complete this, let me say, the most amazing work of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, I think in order for us to really be inspired to take these books and to give them to others, we have to read them ourselves. <laughs> because when we read them ourselves, we actually start to understand what is the value of this, such knowledge. It's transforming. It's not like the knowledge is just theoretical or even philosophical. It's actually transforming as we read it. Our consciousness becomes when we say transcendental or transformed by Srila Prabhupada's presence in the form of these books. So we can speak so many things about the glories of Prabhupada's books. And we see in terms of how many books have been distributed, I think only the Bible has outnumbered Krishna consciousness in terms of distribu distributions of books. Devotees have distributed, and this is the amount that has been counted, almost a half a billion books, 500 million for the last, let me say, 35 years. Book distribution started to happen around 1973. That's when it really started to go. 37 years. Um, and that's the, what's recorded, what to speak of what's not recorded. So it has been a, what we say, a focus of the devotees in the ISKCON society to take this message and bring it everywhere and anywhere. There was one story where one man came to a book fair and the devotees had a table there. And he was looking and he's looking and he got real excited. He turned to his wife, he said this, and he picked up this book. He said, this is the man I've been talking to. He keeps comparing into my dream and saying, buy, the, buy my Bhagavad Gita, buy my Bhagavad Gita. I don't know who he is. <laughs> but he's just, so even Prabhupada's coming into people's lives and they don't even know who Prabhupada is and they're, he's, they're being inspired to somehow or other take up Krishna consciousness. So, uh, as Maharaj ended his lecture in a very powerful way, Lord Chaitanya has made this process available. Bhakti is... Bhakti is pure. Pure bhakti is taught in Srimad Bhagavatam. That means no other desire than to serve the Lord for the pleasure of the Lord. That is bhakti. So to come to that stage is a process. And this, these books actually teach us that process, along with the practice of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So by reading these books and telling others about these books, as was mentioned, so many nice verses, Prabhupada says, those who give this message to others, they are the most munificent. Want to be recognized by God? We want to be recognized by our friends, our family members, people in general, or even important people in this world. To be recognized by God, that's a great recognition. So take this message and give it to others, you become recognized. Prabhupada, you know, when someone would distribute a book, Prabhupada said, oh, you're so nice, you're so nice. It pleases the Lord, it pleases the spiritual master if we somehow or other um, not only ex take it for ourselves, but give it to others. So there are actually practical programs that one, uh, those of you are inspired to plug into, where you can actually, without changing your life situation, you can get some <coughs> books. Like there's this one program that was started in California called Shastra Don. You buy so many books, 
and then you distribute them, that's all. You give a large, no, not a large, you give a whatever amount of money you can to pay for the books, and then you can just distribute them. So the books are paid for, and then like that, you can just give it, give it to your friends like that. So maybe not a, some of us are not, you know, able to preach, but we can always give a gift to others. You know. Here's a nice book to read. So, take it up. And there's, su there's such, uh, what we say, fulfillment in this. The fulfillment is so, not, so wonderful. Because you know you're not only pleasing the person or benefiting that person, but well, you're pleasing Krishna. <laughs> and that's what we want to do. We want to please Krishna. Right? If Krishna is pleased, as is, Prabhupada said, there's nothing else you have to aspire for. That is the goal of spiritual life, to please Krishna. So we're chanting the holy names, that pleases Krishna. We're taking Krishna prasadam, that pleases Krishna. But, there's so many, but to give this message to others is why the acharyas come to this world. So we take a, by doing the same thing they're doing, we're actually getting, what we say, full mercy. So we can do it in so many ways. So many stories. I was just, we had published this book, Holy Jail, about preaching in prison. One young man. He was on the brink of frustration. He had tried practicing every particular religion that he could find. He was finally someone, he was, he was thinking, I can't stay in this prison. It's too miserable. I'm just suffering. I'm just going to end my life. And he actually planned to commit suicide. And then one day, one of his friends gave him a card for ordering a book of was coming back. So he said, all right, I'll try it. He got the book coming back. He read the book. He said, this is, this is amazing. And then there was a, an address to the ISKCON prison ministry that was connected with the book. And then he started writing, and then they were sending more books. Now he's preaching to other prisoners. <laughs> so, you know, it's like these books bring Prabhupada's presence into people's lives in the form of this transcendental knowledge. So, what else can I say, Marge? <laughs> Anything else? Is it a practical way to take books tonight? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I did one time? I said, I don't know if Pierre will like this, but I'll try it anyway. You get a special discount. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so far, no reactions from me. All right. <laughs> but, you know, somehow or other, you know, you could go and get some Bhagavad Gita's and just give them to your friends, give them to your work colleagues, give them to your relatives. Like that. Is there a program in process here for purchasing books and distributing books? I don't. Huh? Well, I don't think we are either. Anyway, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> That's how Krishna consciousness works. So we have that desire, Krishna will provide whatever we need. And we know that. Because Srila Prabhupada made his mission too. He wanted to spread the holy name and he wanted to give transcendental knowledge. So he has spread the holy name in the form of the Hare Krishna Sankirtan movement. And he's permeated the world. He said the communists were very effective in spreading their propaganda because they published so much of their literature and they distributed it widely. He said, that was a good tactic. So it's in the same way we want to flood the world with this knowledge. And as Maharaj said earlier, you know, this, Prabhupada actually said it, this, this movement will save the world in its darkest hour. And, the, and it's, it's getting pretty dark out there now. 
not because it's late, but it's, it's getting dark. <laughs> you know, I remember 1980s, the American dream was the real, everyone had it, you know. Good jobs, and now material things were coming and people were going in and so many things were happening. In the 90s, things started to go a little less. The dream was somewhat still there. Now it's now it's just a nightmare. Nobody's buying into this idea of, of the happiness that comes my way of you know living in America and having all you want and whenever you want and having nice jobs and so many other things. You can't talk to anybody, and they're, they're not going to. They're not convinced anymore because it's not there. It never was there before. It was a dream. Now it's and everyone's waking up and found out it wasn't a real dream. So the world is is in a really difficult situation. So this knowledge is even more important than it was. It's 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 an emergency. It's it's actually an emergency. And if one person, this is how Krishna thinks. If one person gets Krishna consciousness, Krishna feels so happy and so indebted to that person who gave. That's how Krishna thinks. He's so appreciated that anyone who distributes makes another person Krishna conscious or brings that person to Krishna conscious. So we're in a very fortunate position to get the mercy of the Lord by becoming Krishna conscious and by distributing this knowledge to others. You can go, you can carry, just get some small books and when you're traveling to work you meet somebody and you just Give them a book. Meet somebody at the store, give them a book. Or talk about the book. As they say, where's a will, there's a way. Okay. Maharaj, right, anything else? Would you like to end it? Okay. Thank you very much. So don't forget, this is the Christmas season. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shiva Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Pingalandi, Hare Krishna.